Hello there. How are you? <laughs> Happy good. Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. How's everybody out there doing today? <laughs> I'm chilling like Bob Dylan. I'm KJ, good. I'm do KJ good. know who Bob Dylan is? No, I don't know who Bob Dylan is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see that everybody is doing well on this Sunday afternoon. I must say that I'm certainly mostly glad that winter has been generous to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we don't have to drive. Well, we haven't had too many days where we had to like drive in the snow too much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about that because, you know, in Michigan, we can kind of get anything. Yeah. yeah. And you really can't count it out to really mid-April. Oh, mm -hmm. I know. Kind of almost the end of April. It has snowed on my birthday before, but, you know. Yeah. That's I'm what a, Prince said. I'm a snow queen. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Everybody, listen, we have my wonderful, beautiful niece, KJ, intelligent, smart, so sweet. She loves her auntie. <laughs> and I'm so glad to have you on the show, Miss KJ, Caitlin Thank Jade. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank mm. you. <laughs> so without further ado, I got Mr. A question. DJ. I got a question for both of you guys. But before I ask it, we are going to scratch an album by Mavis Staples. Uh oh. Mavis, Mavis Staples. Oh, wait, I might be saying what? Gladys. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Mavis Staples was the lead singer of the Staples Singers. And she was the, the one that sung with um the Winans, right? Oh, what never song? Mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't no. Didn't she sing that's a song? That's Anita Baker. Them? Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. My um something about my people. She I'll take you there. Yes. Okay. That's, yeah, I'll take you there. That was the staple singers. And Woodrow Sanders, which who was Vern, he know he trying to <laughs> so look, Maple Maple Staples made they made that song. They also made uh Let's Do It Again. But she was the inspiration behind Michael Jackson saying Shamon. Oh, okay. Oh, well, she did very that interesting. first. Then he copied her. Okay. So anyway, we gonna we gonna scratch a little bit of Miss Maple May, Mavis. Okay. Staples, and got a question. The okay. question is: Where are we going today? We're going all, all the way, way there. there. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Where are we going today? Hello, everybody. Once again, we have Miss Kaylin Jade on the podcast. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Kaylin. Thank you. I'm so excited for my beautiful niece to be here. She's done a marvelous work. And so we had to come on here and talk about it. In lieu of Black History Month, okay, um, Kaylin did this wonderful article that I thought was wonderfully written and then she did um personal interviews with people to get their stories so before we tap into all of that kaylin would you like to introduce ourselves and then aaron's gonna hit us with that icebreaker hmm. okay um my name is kaylin j um i am a junior in high school um, I am also a varsity track runner okay. for my school team, 
I am in the National Honor Society, and I am also the manager of Black Student Union at my school for the dance well, team. Check that out. Girl, the girl stay busy. <laughs> Let me tell y'all one thing about my KJ, okay? No grass is going to ever grow under her feet because she don't stand <laughs> in one place long enough. Mm. <laughs> the girl be on the move, and I love it because she I is a very, very... Be. She got places to be, people to go, and <laughs> her and her friends be on the move. They movers and shakers, and I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, so KJ, oh Aaron, what's our icebreaker? Let's and, and and guys, you guys can answer the icebreaker as well. Yeah. Um, the icebreaker is: Do you remember the first time you recognized that you were black in America, that you were treated a little differently than? everybody else in america that first time that you realize you are not an equal i can definitely remember <laughs> but we're gonna let the young lady go first hey jay can you remember i remember one memory my parents also remember this because it was when we first moved to the area that we live in now mm -hmm. um and i was in i want to say i was in fourth grade um and, you know, going to school every morning, you have to wait at the bus stop. You get on the bus with your friends and stuff. But mm -hmm. since we had first moved here, I really didn't know anybody on my bus. Okay. And so one of the days, um, it was just, like, really crowded. And I wasn't able to, like, sit next to some people that were, like, in my class. Okay. I knew them, but they weren't really, like, my friends yet. Okay. And so we had um, safeties that would, like... They were in, the safeties were usually in, like, fifth grade, um, older than the rest of the kids, so they could, like, keep us, you know, safe or whatever. So okay. one of the girls, I was just, like, standing in the aisle, and one of the girls told me to sit in the seat next to this boy, and I didn't know him. And um, so I sat down, but then he started, like, making a big deal about it and saying, like, oh, I don't want to sit next to her, I don't want to sit next to her, and one of the safeties asked him, like, why? Like, what's the problem? And he, he had ended up telling, like, everyone on the bus, he yelled it. He said, I don't want to sit next to her because she's black. And mm. I just remember everyone, like, laughing and stuff. And I really didn't know that that was something that was bad because I right. hadn't experienced um, racism prior to that. Mm -hmm. And so wow. even after, like, even after I got home, I didn't say anything to my parents until, like, I think probably – two or three days after and I remember we were all in my parents room just like laughing and just talking to each other and I had brought it up and I was like yeah this kid he said he didn't want to sit next to me because I was black and I tried to make a joke out of it but no one laughed mm -hmm. and right so I was like oh I didn't know that this situation was as serious as it was yeah until my parents were like Kaylin that's not something that somebody should just normally say right um, that's not how you treat people and I think that was like the first time I actually realized that like I am a black kid who goes to a like a predominantly white school and I got like old enough to a point where I could realize that the kids around me are realizing that we are different somehow mm. so I think yeah. that was one of the times that would have made me mad before I share my ear. What is that? Oh, Vern. Oh, Vern's was when a security guard followed my his mother and her children in a department store and she went off. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So stuff like that is, is, is crazy. So my first time was actually at my first job. And I remember this lady come in to put all her stuff on the counter and she was waiting. Be I was waiting on someone before her. I worked at a drugstore now known as CVS <laughs> and it wasn't known as CVS. Then it was Arbor drugs. If anybody can remember. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget. She was, and she had an attitude already. And so I'm like, why is she looking like that? You know, I'm just like rigging up the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when she comes up, she says, I want you to ring me up, but I don't want you to keep my check in your drawer because I don't want you to have my address so you and your friends can come and break into my house. Mm 
Wow. And I'm like, what? So I'm like, like who even who even says something like that? So I'm stunned. Mm-hmm. Well, this other white girl, Josephine, I will never forget her. Everybody called her Morticia because she wore the dark black lipstick and her hair parted down the middle and jet black hair. Mm. She came over. Nobody liked um, Josephine because she was kind of mean. But that day she came over and knocked all that lady stuff in the basket. Mm. And she was like, if you want to get rang up, you come to my register. Mm. And that day forward, we were friends. Like mm. nobody else like Joe, but she stood up for me that day. Mm. And she was so, well, she seemed like she was, I mean, really, it was a, a defense mechanism for her once mm-hmm. you kind of got to know her. But she stood up for me that day. And that was when I realized I, I'm black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 if anybody is from Michigan, it was in Livonia. So mm-hmm. you know how that goes. And I still to this day am funny when I'm in Livonia. Still to this day, that situation <laughs> has really made me feel a certain kind of way when I'm traveling through there. So <laughs> what about yours? Well, mine came in two parts, but uh like the first one when I was in kindergarten, as early as kindergarten. Uh, it was only wow. by the time I was in kindergarten, our neighborhood had gotten really black, but it was just okay. a few white people still hanging around because they didn't have okay. money to move. <laughs> and so this boy said um, he got into an argument. This white guy got into an argument with another boy in kindergarten. So, you know, mm-hmm. what kind of argument that was. Right. And so <laughs> the little uh, white guy said N word. And I was like, wow, is, does that matter? It's like, dang. Yeah, and I never, because I just thought we were all going to be friends, but he made a distinction that we were in words. Wow. So, you know, that was that was one thing. We took him outside and beat him down. But look, when I was at, when I was- You at, know, I, you just going to skip over that? Oh, what? We, we had, we beat him up. But look, the one where, where I really noticed it was in, uh, when I went to- um, my mom let me not go to church one Sunday, which was rare. And I went to a Tiger game. We caught the bus down to Tiger Stadium and we were up in the bleachers and it was like the seventh inning. The um, Tigers, I guess, were winning and people were leaving or they were losing. And so we started going down to the better seats. This white guy said, hey, you can't go down there. And I'm like 12 years old. And I was like, why? And I just kept going. He said, his friend said, well, you know, in words, they'll go anywhere. And it froze me like, Wow. Man, this this they are really making a distinction between my my skin color and your skin color. That was wow. the first time, and that's when I really started expecting it. You know, I just they had that antitrust thing. Yeah, so I went a long time. Erin, you were very young. KJ didn't mention didn't say that her parents went to that school and set it off. Now, first of all, I know your parents personally, so I already knew that happened. I didn't. Uh, I, this is my first time hearing that story, but I knew that that happened. They oh. did. Sorry, sorry, I forgot to mention they <laughs> they went to my principal's office the next day, literally that morning, and had a meeting with my principal multiple times. As and you should have. He, my dad talked to the kid's dad. It was it was a whole ordeal, and I'm very grateful for my parents. Yeah. Yes, for standing up for me. Yes, we did. <laughs> what did Crystal say? Crystal says, "I remember when I was 19, started working at a company, excellent pay, with 800 white people, and I was the third black person hired. My mm-hmm. boss asked me, I, my boss asked me, I learned about the four-hour show-up pay. When the guard wouldn't let me on the premises to work on the Saturday, my boss asked me, why didn't you come? I told him the guard wouldn't." The guard said I wasn't on the list. So I have so many stories. Wow. So they wouldn't even let you in. Mm. That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy out here. Um, and unfortunately, it seems like lately we're kind of backtracking. Mm-hmm. But thank God. Thank God. Up above. That it is still not like how some of our ancestors had to deal with. 
Because mm. right now I'm gonna bump your basket back. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not saying when you get to some of the bigger issues. I'm talking about when it's some one on one stuff. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. you didn't have to take a weed shell over. Right. Yeah, we didn't have to take that. <laughs> visuals, man. These visuals are crazy. <laughs> but listen, listen. I have my beautiful niece, KJ. KJ did a wonderful article that I was completely impressed with because I'm like, first of all, it's my niece. Okay. <laughs> and when she sent it in a group and I clicked it open, I was like, what? I was impressed. So uh -oh. if anybody got a chance to see my niece's it's article. Angry. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear. I can. You can hear me. I'm sorry. Maybe I <laughs> go ahead. Keep going. Okay. So if anybody got a chance to see my niece's article um, and read it and listen to some of her interviews, this is her article by Kaylin J. McDowell growing up in the in the 50s. Um, she did personal interviews with different people, which was really impressive because Aaron and I sat there and listened to um, at least about three or four people's um, interview, which was really, really interesting. Um, and then just to see how you had written it out. And I'm like, this look professional. It was good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was great. I'm like, Thank this you. It's good. You. This girl's got this girl has got a calling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, Angel, what you put the air uh question marks up for. Maybe she maybe she couldn't hear something either. I'm not sure. Um, you can let me know what the question marks are for. Um Oh, she was talking about her last game. She said, sorry, Aaron, I was deleting parts of my statement and pressed the wrong key. We were working on placing all the info in the computer system. That was great. Yeah, that's, that's okay. crazy. So, Kaylin, in this wonderful article that you wrote, you basically talked about, you interviewed different people who grew up in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought you were going to interview Aaron, but... You I did didn't that. know. I didn't know at the time. Yeah. Well, he was really born in 68. Oh. <laughs> that was my crack for the day. Anyway. You know, and I, I can't hear. You can't hear us? Now I can. I didn't hear that last exchange. Oh, good. See, look at God. <laughs> look at God, Kaylin. Look at God. Wait, um, why, why, why wasn't I interviewed? Well... Let's move on. So, <laughs> so listen, everybody. Kaylin, um, she interviewed a couple of people. Kaylin, if you want to talk about the people. First of all, let's talk about um, how did you even come up with this concept of um, the interviews and the article? Okay. So my article was for my final project for my um, sixth hour class, African American History and Culture. But I was talking to my teacher. Um, her name was Miss Smiley. I love her so much. And Aww, hi, Miss she, hi, Miss Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was talking to me about um her grandmother who lives in Florida. And she was basically telling me like whenever she would go down there, her grandmother would tell her about um, all the stories that she had and all the people that she met when she was younger because her grandmother was older. Okay. And um, I was like thinking about it because my original plan was to interview like black owned businesses okay. and ask them like, you know, what got them started, what um, challenges they faced to get where they are now and stuff. But after talking to her, I realized like I don't really talk to my um my relatives, like my grandparents or like my cousins about how they grew up. Mm -hmm. And, and I was talking to her and she was like, you know, you should really take the time to talk to them and um, maybe even record it. So then in the future, you'll be able to listen to it all the time. And I was like, you know, that's a good idea. And so I was thinking about it. And I said, maybe I should make this my project mm -hmm. because before when we were talking about that um this was before the project even like began so I was mm -hmm. like that's a good idea to make my project mm -hmm. that was an excellent idea mm -hmm. it was very creative I mean in my opinion you know and it was so 
it's, it's Black History Month, so it was so right on time, mm-hmm. and it it was just perfect. So, in in some of the interviews you did, if you guys haven't got a chance to see the article, it is posted to our our Facebook page, and you guys can go and look at it and listen to it and see some of the people that she interviewed. So, like, tell us some of the people that you interviewed, and how did you make your selections? Um, so I was talking with like my dad and my mom and they helped me choose some people right off the bat I knew I wanted to interview grandma and grandpa my grandparents because um you know they're just they're always in my life and they're always here but when I really think about it I don't really know much about how they grew up and so I was like they're the number one people them two are the number one people who I want to interview and then I thought about it and my dad was like you should interview our cousin Tizel um, on his side of the family, and I was like, okay, like, I got Tizel, and then my um, great aunt Alma, mm-hmm. um, so I was like, I got them, and then, who else did I interview? I interviewed Miss um, DeGraffenry. Miss DeGraffenry, um, she is my godmother's mother, so all the people I interviewed are related to me somehow, and then I also interviewed Pinky, my cousin Pinky Thomas, but she was she wasn't on the plan originally, but um my cousin Tizel sent her number my way and she was more than happy to help me out with my project. You got some good info and I know Erin have a question, but what I did say before we um while we were off the grid, I thought it was very interesting that you decided to interview people like that because some of these stories go to the grave. And then we don't have them to pass on, you know, down through the generations because they died there. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. thought it was very nice that you, you know, were able to learn history from people who actually live the mm-hmm. history. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. So uh, I actually just off the grid. Um, what did a few of the people say? And were you surprised by some of the things people said? Um, I know in one of the interviews, I think it was with um pinky she had mentioned that oh no this was with miss de graffinried because she grew up in alabama and you know alabama that's down south during that time um racism was heavier down there than it was up in the north Mm -hmm. and so she had a lot to say and so she had mentioned that there was a bombing the alabama church bombing um and one of the little girls that had passed away um her older sister used to babysit and Mm -hmm. I was like you know I think that was also another moment of like realization that that people have so many connections because when you when you read stuff um about that on the news like oh there was a bombing like oh I feel so bad for those girls right think about it and it's like people actually know these people like it's like Mm -hmm. people in my family actually know these people and are still affected by it to this day. Mm-hmm. Something that mm-hmm. like, was so big and so tragic still, mm-hmm. you know, holds so much power and emotion on these people today. And I think realizing that when I interviewed everyone, I realized how many connections everyone had mm-hmm. with, you know, these such um, big events that happened in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen, did you know that Spike Lee made a movie from that? Uh, that no, I- no. It's called Four Little Girls. Oh. Four, yeah, Four Little Girls Died in That Bombing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but and one thing you said that was interesting um, when we were talking before the show was a lot of the things that your grandparents and your uh, the people that you spoke to um, may seem like a long time ago to people your age, but then you came to the realization that it wasn't just, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Because it's, this is what I was saying before, um, in our, like, regular history classes that they make you take, like, U.S. history and world history mm-hmm. as a requirement to pass the grade, mm-hmm. they skim over Black history. They just talk about, oh, slavery was from this point, and it ended here. Mm-hmm. But really, it didn't, but they don't tell you that. Right. So, mm-hmm. but then, the thing is, I didn't even sign up for this class. My counselor put me <laughs> in this class. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, I was like, what is this class? Mm -hmm. And she was like, it's going to be good for you. My parents were telling me it's going to be good for you. And so I was like, okay, I'll mm -hmm. do it, I guess. But, <laughs> but See? like they tell us in this class, they tell us specifically about time periods and and the actual facts about slavery did not end here because there was after slavery ended there was sharecropping mm -hmm. and stuff that was a form of um freedom that they tell them oh you're free but really you're not free you're right. still right free. right so it's like this class specifically it like made me realize that these dates that slavery was or these dates that these bombings was and all these powerful big moments in history was not that long ago mm -mm. right and i think that what that's one thing that like i'm glad um i took this class for because now i'm like actually realizing people are still walking healthy and living mm -hmm. today that remember these moments um mm -hmm. from you know probably like 60 70 years ago yeah. Right. And sometimes depending on the situation, less than that. And that's why I think what irritates me so bad sometimes is when people say, you know, oh, there you guys go. Always want to use the race card. And so my rebuttal is always, why should there even be a card? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why should there be a card? These things happen and you throwing that up as a strategy to be manipulative, to try to say you need to forget where you came from. Right. And it's not that long ago when we came from this. Mm -hmm. And let's also be reminded that behind the scenes, sometime you guys are still having these conversations, mm -hmm. just not sometime in front of our face. So yeah. these yeah. things still live. They're still alive and well. Yeah. And so what are we doing today? We can only do little things within our own community sometime to change some things. But um, I believe one of the questions was, did you learn something that was kind of going on to um, then mm -hmm. that you kind of see is kind of still kind of happening now? Mm -hmm. Did you yeah, learn I, some, anything in the article or from the people that you were talking to? Something that like I can say that's happened that was happening then that's happening now is like prejudices and and um discrimination like because mm -hmm. obviously it's not gonna be like oh we can't use um the white water fountain because it's not how it was mm -hmm. um, it's not how it is today how it was then mm -hmm. but there still is prejudiced people who have such strong opinions about where black people can go and where black people can stand when obviously it's 2024 like right <laughs> people don't really look at a black person and be like oh my god you can't stand here like this is not a place for you yes not everyone does that but there's still people who are in that mindset it, absolutely that like holds such a strong opinion about it mm -hmm. and majority of these people that hold such a strong opinion about people of other races are people like in power and stuff and i noticed that um like talking about the people in um i'm gonna use my school for example a while ago i think it was like my freshman year um one of these kids uh i think he was a senior at the time he had like posted this video saying that he was going to lynch all black people and he was saying a lot of things about black kids but the school really didn't do anything for the black people in the school mm -hmm. they just they took him out of public school and they put him online obviously for his protection but then that was all they for did. his protection <laughs> and you said it exactly right for his protection yeah. but that was all they did so it was mm -hmm. kind of like you have you're in um such a high higher up position in like the school district like um teachers and like counselors and principals and you know how it goes up and stuff mm -hmm. but you don't really use your authority to comfort people of color in your school district exactly that's, yeah, that's very well put yes yes absolutely yeah. very, very well put, put. So um, that's one thing i would say that's like still strong today Mm -hmm. You are absolutely correct. Um, and I think sometimes that's all when certain people get in office. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the little man, and I'm going to say the little man, not that I'm calling us little man, but when I say the little man, people who don't hold such powerful positions, yeah, that's really. why they are so can rally for these people because that person is speaking for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they have the power to make that change. So mm-hmm. we're out here and we're equal. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say too much for you, but I'm hoping that this person can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why they rally and have these big events where they're, da, 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 you know, they're mm-hmm. chatting and making sure that things um, come into play mm-hmm. because this person is their representative. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, that is, a that was a very good observation. Yeah. One of the things I liked about the, the article that you did in the, in the, the things that people said was that you got firsthand. We talked about this a minute ago, firsthand experience, and you cannot negate anybody's experiences. They're mm-hmm. talking from where they went through, through these fifties and sixties, you know, mm-hmm. to, to live in 2024. You can't undo that. Unlike history that's been p- taken apart and we can feed you kids in 2024, our oh version God. of history, and you yeah. never get to feel the importance of the contributions of black people. So, you know, don't nobody know, I mean, not a lot of people know that black people made the deep freezer, black people made the lawnmower, black right. people made the, the the coupler on the train. You know, we did a whole lot of things in this country that nobody gets the credit, um, the credit for. For example, mm-hmm. the filament, if you look at a, a light bulb, there's little coils inside the little bulb part. Mm-hmm. That guy did that. Mm-hmm. But when you think of light bulb, you think of Edison. Hmm. Because he's not mentioned in the same sentence as Edison. You're right. And, um, there was a guy who, a uh, black guy who invented his uh, his own car. Mm-hmm. But when you think of car, you think of you know Henry Ford, Ford. right? Mm-hmm. You know, there's Ford. a whole lot of things that we're just like, okay, thanks for the for the invention, but we're gonna keep your name over there, and we're gonna prop our thing up. You know, yeah. and, and the reason why the, the White House is called the White House is because. <laughs> Black people wrote it. I mean, they built it, but it's but they we were not designed know. when you to see be. it. I don't want you to think of you. It's, ama- it's amazing. And then what this is why I don't okay. Okay, I'm on the soapbox. Um, Keila, you gotta talk me down. Okay. But um the last point is, and I'm I'm really still talking about how the first hand experiences are powerful. Um like we can be really mindless a lot of times. We can go to a baseball game, football game, whatever, and we'll stand for a song that talks about killing black people. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please remove your hats and stand for the national anthem. But they only sing the first stanza. Research that third stanza mm. when they talk about killing us. and But we keep standing for it anyway. And that's the thing. And so when you have a certain person that's trying to take a stand against it in a very peaceful protest, he by some very powerful people, he gets um what's the black ball basically? Mm-hmm. Because he wanted to take a stand saying that this song is not right. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have some people that are offended. Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't believe you you not standing for the national anthem. You should be glad to be an American. What an yeah. English I know, you know, I had to, I had to be dramatic with it. <laughs> and, you know, you know, it's, it's funny that you guys mention that now, because one of my friends, um, when we were in elementary school, she like never stood for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I really didn't know why, because mm-hmm. I was like, everyone else does it. So like, mm-hmm. why, why are you choosing not to? And I think it was when my teacher actually like got mad at her. And was like, why aren't you standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? We do this every morning, this mm-hmm. and this and that. That I was like, I feel like there's some meaning behind this. Yeah, <laughs> like, like why, is she, why isn't she standing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think it was just actually like, I actually saw it. I actually saw my teacher getting upset, trying to explain to her why the Pledge of Allegiance is so important. And this and that. Like, I really just... People have different views and some people's opinions are just stronger. Absolutely. Than- and and by all means, you know, they their their views um should be respected. Mm. You know what I mean? If even if I don't agree with it, I don't have to agree with you to respect your opinion. Right. So when you come against me because I don't want to stand for your song, mm-hmm. it's it should be my right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I shouldn't have to stand for your song. But mm-hmm. what did Crystal say, Aaron? Crystal said many, many inventions from blacks through since the beginning. Uh, recently, Mr. Moses West, a retired ex-military man, invented a generator to change air to water. Mm-hmm. Wow. I remember that. Air to water. That's, that's, you don't usually go that direction. It was used in Flint, but you did not hear about it. Yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. And I think um, some some things, because I can't confirm that story, but some things actually kind of happened to him. To him, I can't. Mm-hmm. Re- I'll have to. We'll have to do the research later. Yeah. Um, Miss Agnes Perry says, "Great point. 1940s and 50s people born in that time period and other cultures grew up in a time frame where racism was blatant and outspoken. Mm-hmm. Change is extremely different." difficult for some because that's how they grew up i face it every day at work it's social and systemic nowadays yep yeah. that that's is so true stuff. it's hard to prove yeah it really is, is. Yeah. it really is yeah. it really is and, so, and go, go ahead, ahead Aaron. Uh-huh. no 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 okay. go ahead so this is a great i love this oh there she go I, I love this um uh this report that you did as a springboard Mm-hmm. How does this affect um, um, future? Because it because it sounds like you got a journalist in you. You got an author inside. I know you. that's what I was Maybe. like. She's like a writer. She's a journalist. <laughs> She's that, a- I mean, it flowed. It was really natural, and I it's an expose. So I really would like for to see more of that. Is this something l- coming? Let me point this out because I know you, what your question uh, is going to be for me. her. Aaron, it was written way better than some of the people who are actually doing it. Like you go in their articles and I'm not going to even lie. I'll go in the professionals, their mm-hmm. articles. And I'm like, what? I know they know this word and go here. Now, if I know this, <laughs> I'm not if I know this. Yeah. So it was very well written. And I'm not just saying that because you're my niece. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, It was very well written. But Aaron, you were getting ready to ask her a specific question. And I want to know the answer to it, too. Can we expect a sequel? Um, <laughs> and not have it necessarily be an assignment. <laughs> Maybe. You know, I did have a lot of fun doing it um, and interviewing all these different people. Because mm-hmm. even though, you know, everyone procrastinates just a little bit. Just a little I bit. had a lot of time to do this project, but... <laughs> I waited till like two weeks before to like actually start doing it. And so that was two weeks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so just imagine if you really put some time. <laughs> right. She was like, oh, let me ask grandma and grandpa. They got like so. <laughs> Call me. I, waited, I procrastinated just a tad, but you know, I did have a lot of fun. I, I liked making the website. I liked, you know, publishing it. I like hearing back from people who actually like read it and listen to it and what they have to say. So maybe possibly if, if I think about it a little bit more. <laughs> I, think, I think you should tap into it, even if it's something that you do on the side. You know what I mean? While you're still yeah. trying to figure out what you want to do in life. I think you really have a gift there. Mm-hmm. And I know that everybody is doing all these different things, but I I really, it was very strong for Thank you. a high school student. Um, and like I said, I've read professional articles, even some published books that I have threw back in the pile because I'm like, got to the third page and I'm like, they didn't hire editor. You know, <laughs> serious, because once you realize that they just crap all over the book, you're like, OK, this is garbage. Mm-hmm. But um, I know Aaron have a few things. What did Agnes say, Aaron? She says, so important for you to be aware of these things. Great job, young lady. I'm sure you've gained a wealth, a great wealth of knowledge in two weeks. I Thank know. you. Thank and you. And I'm going to tell you, there's this saying. Sometimes I know, Kayla, about procrastination. It is wrong. So, so <laughs> wrong. But I will say this. Sometimes I procrastinate because I'm still killing it. <laughs> That's why. I still get the job done, even after I procrastinated. That's why I do it so well. But mm-hmm. okay. But anyway. <laughs> Don't do this at home, kids. That was not sound advice. But, um, Aaron, what were you going to take us on this little journey? Oh, okay. So I was going to say also to Miss KJ that uh, what you did really uh, informed a lot of non-Black people. I think that non-Black kids your age 
Well, that would be the same thing. Now I'd like to um, <laughs> learn a lot about our history that they wouldn't norm normally know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would probably learn so much more about George Washington than George Washington Carver. Right. Absolutely. So, um, and I think you did a great service for not only your generation, but for your school. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, and Vern made a statement about the youth, which is so true. And we talked about this. Um, Vern, on Vern a, made a statement? He did. And on another show, when he said, oh. this young lady gives me hope for the younger generation, we're losing our history because we aren't teaching the kids. And yeah. we literally talked about that on the MLK show, yeah. which is so true. It's kind of phasing out. And it's our job and responsibility to still to instill this stuff and our children, because the schools are not going to do it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and of course he made this statement, the only black history people, my younger family members know is James from good times. Take me one. So, um, um, so I enjoy working on this project with KJ. Her questions actually reminded me of fears, hurts, and angers from that time period. Yeah. I can only imagine, um, KJ, don't listen to your honor, her procrastination <laughs> laws. No procrastination when you attend the University of Michigan. <laughs> well, I said, don't do this at home, kids. I had a disclaimer. <laughs> I, and Vern, okay. and Vern shouldn't be talking about it. Vern should not be talking about procrastination as much as the old the OG's been off the air. Anyway, oh, oh, um, oh, shots fired. Okay. Pew, pew, pew. okay, look, you got my back. You got my back. Thanks, thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, so let's let's look at a little bit of um um Black history. Okay, little little known, and this may encourage your next project, Miss um KJ. Okay. So the first one is um, well, Aaron. This is the very first one, technically. That's Black History, right there. Right. <laughs> history right. in the making with Kaylin Jade. Okay, <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. What's the first picture you got? <clears throat> I got that one. That's the first one. The Black Bottom. Yeah, Black Bottom was a section. I'm gonna try to go through them real quick. Okay. Black Bottom was a section of um, <clears throat> Detroit that uh, Black people dominated. We had stores, shops, uh, bakeries, everything there, schools, but we did not have a hospital. It was the only thing that we had to travel outside for. But uh, it was thriving so well that Black people didn't have to leave the, the Black Bottom area. It was also called Paradise Valley. You can put that second Black. black okay, hold on. Up. Let me get to it, huh? Okay, uh, so it was also called Paradise Valley. It's Black okay. Bottom and Paradise Valley. So uh, it got to be so big that one Detroit mayor decided that he is going to get rid of that section of the city because these black people didn't need anybody else. And uh, he ran a freeway through it. The mm. freeway is known now as 375. Mm. And, that, uh, and that's a freeway that goes nowhere. But um, that mayor's name is Mayor Albert Cobo. Mm him. He ran a freeway through Black Bottom slash Paradise Valley, scattered all the black people throughout all of the city when we had a nicely contained uh, little piece of the city where we thrived and didn't need anybody. Wow. And that was Detroit's version of what was happening all over the country. Oh, wow. Yeah. So next next slide you got. Deacons for Defense. The Deacons for Defense was uh, formerly- Is that Forrest Whitaker? This was the movie version of it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did a movie of it because nobody, and I'll tell you why they don't have any pictures of the real Deacons for Defense is because they became their own security for the civil rights movement. Oh, okay. You know, they would they would go to wherever protests were and would be their and own. And would protect them. They were the precursors to the Black Panthers. Wow. And they were church deacons who got tired. Wow. Yes. They had such an impact. I want to see that. No. They had such an impact that they stopped the Klan from being so overtly abusive to black people. They had to go back and start, you know, attacking black people by night when they're asleep. Mm. But they had sneak so attacks. Impact. Sneak attacks. Yeah, sneak attacks. Because when you okay. saw a black guy with a rifle, you kind of thought, okay, I may not want to put this hood on. Okay. Uh, so that was Deacons for, for Defense. 19... Um, 
Okay. What's the next one? See this sweet old lady here. When you see the sweet old lady, what do you think about? You see how they handling her? Sweet, I think of me, but okay. Okay. <laughs> but do you think that this woman we got the same glasses on? Oh, okay. Maybe you guys are similar then. <laughs> do you think that this woman has the need to go to jail like this? Mm -mm. It looks no. like I'm gonna say no taken away okay. for nothing. Oh, okay. That lady's name is, uh, what is her name? Um, Isola. Isola Curry. Isola Curry needs to be buried under the jail because she stabbed Martin Luther King with a letter opener in Harlem in 1958. Yes. She did. She did. They, uh, he was he was doing a book signing in New York City. Well, she not oh, like me. I, I remember this. I take that back. I, she was nothing like me. <laughs> she was nothing <laughs> like me. <laughs> and she, uh, and so she was like, um, I grew up in uh, between Hastings and Rivard. Rivard. We moved further east when I was eight due to the three seventy five was being built. Yep. Mm. So, um, Isola Curry was diagnosed with paranoia, schizophrenia. She was mm -hmm. always homicidal and stuff like that. She saw Dr. King. She asked him, are you Dr. King? She said, yes, put out a letter, open her and stabbed him a few inches from his heart. And so all his helpers were going to try to yank it out, but they said, no, don't take it out. He could bleed out. So they took him to the hospital and this, the, that's where he um, landed. Wow. He did, his chest is all bandaged up. But that he did- crazy. So they found her guilty. They found her crazy. And she went to a place for the criminally insane. And mm -hmm. then she went to a nursing home where she died. Wow. Yeah. So next. This is the tall guy on the a second from the right is L. Alex Wilson. He was a newspaper editor, extraordinary newspaper reporter. So uh, when he was younger, and I said this on the last show, but it, it was without the pictures. Um, he... Uh, we lived in Florida and he uh, was walking down the street one time and the Klan was walking up. And back then it was like, you didn't look them in the eye and you crossed the street. Mm. But he did that. And he always hated himself for doing that. So he said, I'm never running from the Klan again. Well, years later, he got this job assignment to go to cover the Little Rock Nine where nine black kids were integrating Little Rock public schools. They thought that these black reporters were a front to get the attention of the white people so they could sneak the black kids in the school. That mm -hmm. wasn't it. The black kids were going to school anyway. Well, the mm -hmm. white mob started attacking all of these five black reporters. Mm -hmm. He remembered his that Klan incident and said, hey, it's like 100 guys, but I'm not going to run. Everybody mm -hmm. else ran. Six foot six, L. Alex Williams stood out among everybody. And they really came down him really hard. They were beating on him. Nobody attacked him from the front. Everybody attacked him from the back. Mm -hmm. So what happened was one of these cowards in the back hit him in the base of his skull with a brick. Mm -hmm. And that brought on the onset of all, uh, Alzheimer's. And he died in 1960. And he was only 52 years old. That is so sad. And that was my grandmother's brother. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Some history. So, Next, this lady right here is from Detroit. Her name is Viola Liuzzo, and she was 39 years old when she died. This is how she died. Um, she heard that doc, she was a very big a supporter of Dr. King. She heard that Dr. King was uh, having a protest in Montgomery. To you know, they're crossing the Edmund, Edmund Pettus Bridge, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, that's that that bridge was called Bloody Sunday, where they sick dogs on black people, sprayed hoses on them, you know, really injured a lot of black people. Right. She decided she's going to take food and bandages and everything. So she loaded up her car, drove all the way from Detroit, all the way to um, Alabama, gave out the supplies, and then she stayed through the protest. After the protest was over. Her and a couple of guys said, hey, we're all going back to our cities. Can you drop us off at the bus station? She did. And when she was going to drop them off, she was going to um, go back to Detroit. Well, she never made it because she was ran off the road by Klansmen who ran, ran up beside her car and shot through her driver's side window mm -hmm. and instantly killing her. Did not kill her passenger. The passenger faked like he was dead. When the Klansmen drove off, 
he sought help and that's how they found her. Her yes. name is, her name is Viola Liuzzo, a white lady who helped the cause of civil rights. Um, mm. um, now here's a little twist in her story. Well, you can keep that up. Okay. They named the park after her in Detroit. That park okay. is south of the lodge, uh, south of Eight Mile and west of the lodge. I'm like, I know I've seen that sign somewhere. Yeah. Okay. They got they named a playground after her. Okay. Um, the twist in her story is the Klansman that shot her, there was four guys in a pickup truck, and one of them was an FBI informant. So in order for uh they caught the other three because of the informant, but in, in order to uh protect the identity of the informant, they said that Miss Liuzo was having sex with black guys, she was on heroin. You know, she was crazy. She, they they ruined her reputation just to keep the focus off their informant. Yeah. Mm. And the, the four guys or the three guys that were um, sent to trial, they did not get convicted for the murder. They got in, uh, <laughs> convicted for violating an uh, anti-Klan rule of black harassment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not the murder. They all were sentenced to 10 years in jail. Don't know how much they served. But they got out. Wow! So oh, we. By the way, she oh. had she had five children and a husband in Detroit, and they never saw her again. That is so sad. Um, this guy, go ahead. This guy's name is Mac Robinson. In 1936, the Olympics was in um, Germany, and Hitler was like, "I'm gonna show you guys that white people dominate everything, including sports, and I'm really gonna show you in the track and field." So Mac Robinson was one of the contestants in that. And so uh, there was one particular um, feat or uh, event. And this may interest you, KJ, being an athlete, uh, the 200 meters, mm -hmm. 200 meters. And he had uh, uh, Hitler had his boy in this race. And he was like standing up like this is when you're going to see the, the us Aryans. We dominate everything. All right. Well, Jesse Owens blew his his butt away, his mm. boy away. And Jesse Owens came in first. Um, Mac Robinson came in second. Two black guys from America beat Hitler's boy wow. in the 1936 Olympics. Now, what's so significant about Mr. Mac Robinson is that he had a younger brother who broke the color barrier in baseball. Wow. Jackie Robinson. Okay. That's mm -hmm. Mac Robinson's baby brother. So they both made history. They did. They both. Wow. Made yep. Uh, Ms. R Ms. Graham says, we need to talk about this more. There's a lot of information our young people don't even know about our own families, their own families. What about all those families' recipes that go to the grave? <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Because these kids, some, uh, some of these women that be talking about they, they don't cook or clean. They, yeah. they don't they don't know no recipes and they right. need to know them. Right. right. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all all three yeah. of our kids, all three of our kids know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> my sister too and my daughter know how to cook very well. <laughs> mm. So here's the next one. <laughs> I mean, it's real. No, this is time at an older age, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then on the coin, Aaron, he's holding up like a fist or something. No, he no, that that's the silver medal he won. Okay. Yeah. So and then you have this one. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so KJ, remember you said the civil rights wasn't that long ago? Here oh, is, this God. is exactly it right here. Did you know your aunt your aunt was down there? Oh, I'm keeping that picture. <laughs> you need to send me that again because <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. I'm always fighting for freedom. That was actually funny. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Sean say, I married a great cook. Yes, you did. We all can cook. Period. You know what? There he go. There he go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Um, yes, that, um, this was very interesting. I want to first say, KJ, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your time with us. Of I think you really 
have a gift that you didn't tapped into. Probably you, you, you did it on a whim, but you, you really have a gift there. Um, it, it, it was, it was very well written. It was, even though you said you only did it in two weeks, I can't even imagine what you would do if you were actually putting some time in it. Cause it was really very well put together. Thank you. Um, for Black History Month, I see that Aaron is dressed as Mr. Clark oh, only on me. <laughs> you can call me Batman. But uh yes, I um I really enjoyed that, Miss KJ. And I think that there's a need. I think that you have the gift. I just think that I think that you are an electric plug and you found your pocket. And I definitely think coming. she did. She found her niche. And yeah. she also created a challenge for you guys. First of all, my niece is better than yours. <laughs> what is the challenge? <laughs> what is the my challenge? challenge? My challenge is for everyone to go and learn something about their relative's history. It doesn't even have to be Black history. It can be anything, um, a story, a favorite memory they have when they were growing up. Or it doesn't even have to be a relative. It can be someone, a friend, you know, mm-hmm. someone who grew up in a different time than you did and learned something new from them. Oh, she says, thank you, a- KJ. Oh. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. Said, thank you, KJ. <laughs> and thank you, parents, for my Gan baby. <laughs> I think, um, I think, um, that's a great challenge to learn something new about your family members, to learn something new about people. Because like we said before, even be it recipes or just stories that can be recycled through the family, you know, told and funny. And, you know, there are funny stories I can tell about my grandfather to this day, you know, and hopefully I'll be able to pass those stories on or whatever. I think it's very interesting. And then just to learn where you come from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where 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 do we come from? What was the dynamics of this? And sometime when you start learning about some past things, some things in the present make sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's why we kind of operate like this. I didn't know that this was happening or, right. you know, mm-hmm. good or bad. You know what I mean? And then some things can be changed. Mm-hmm. Some things can be, you know, you could break some of these um histories of where we not we gonna stop that's gonna stop right there Mm because we didn't know that that was passed through the family so i think um that's a great challenge Mm -hmm. um we certainly appreciate you spending your sunday with us um well i see some future stuff in the making you know if you (laughs) hold tight to what where are we going today that was the wrong one (laughs) (laughs) next week next week we will have pastor dana berry on the show um and she's gonna actually talk about how to overcome deep rooted hurt and i think during a time like this where we are in society um even with race issues, even in our own families, even just different things. Um, I, it's a very much needed conversation. So we're going to tap into that. And um, yes, Kaylin, very good job, like Miss Crystal said. And Aaron, you Thank have something to you. say before we hit that off button? Stay black. Stay <laughs> black. I'll, I'll be, I, we can't watch this off. But I will say within our own community, the colorism... I can't stand that. And we don't even have enough time for me to even go into that. Mm. That's another (laughs) show. But remember, we all the same color. No matter what shade you are. Mm -hmm. Like like Mr. Sean McDowell says, we all bleed red. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So everybody have an awesome. You want to be on the show, Miss Perry? Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Um, hop in my inbox. Let's talk about it. Everybody <laughs> have an awesome Sunday and enjoy your week. And if you're watching the Super Bowl, eat some chicken wings for me. <laughs> go Usher. Go Usher. Go, yeah, because that's what everybody's talking about. <laughs> See y'all later. Peace out. <laughs> Kaylin, don't hang up.